Okay, here we are with the J-Rock Onsen. I have no idea what number episode this is. What is this, 13? Anyone? Yeah, uh, probably. Okay, yeah, all right. 13, yeah. yeah, J-Rock News is bad at counting. I'm sick again, <laughs> as always. And uh, we got here uh, Nexus. Hello. Oh, uh, that took a while. Uh, MBT. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, no quick. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't remind him. Don't remind him. Don't fucking remind him. <laughs> Black. <laughs> nah. <laughs> this was gonna be a good one. It's a new year. <laughs> new year, new clock. You were here for yeah. the new year one, right? Uh, yes, I was. What are you talking about? It's a new year. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't here the last time, so. Yeah. A, oh, oh, yeah, I wasn't either, I think. <laughs> well, we're gonna, we're gonna move into our main topic, because uh, nobody's got time to sit around and listen to you make animal noises all fucking day. And also, Some people are into bear that. with me, people. If it gets really funny and I laugh, I'm probably gonna cough like a smoker. So that's gonna oh, happen. No. It's gonna be, it's gonna be ace. So this month, I wanted to talk about basically the giants in the industry, and in the sense that uh, Sis kind of brought this up a little bit in the last podcast that you guys were conveniently not in about what happens when they retire. And he mentioned, you know, uh, X Japan retired once and then they came back. So we still haven't really felt the effects of what happens when one of these massive fucking bands really does leave forever. So I kind of had that question for you guys and, you know, anybody listening who wants to comment, what does happen when these people go away like who is it that we consider these giants right now i know i have my preferences or you know who i think is really big and you can't really you can't really argue the point of who's big too much because it's you know it's in the fucking numbers but okay but let me first start off like are we gonna just dive into the like usual k part you see so when i think of who's big I would I would list like three bands and I would say they're the biggest ones in my opinion. And whether or okay. not you want to categorize them as just strictly VK or J Rock or whatever, I think that's kind of up to you. But regardless, I think they're coming out of the same umbrella of Japanese heavy music. Okay, so which band would you consider being the big ones? My 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 big three are X Japan, obviously, uh, Gazette, and Dear Andre. I expected that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because think about it. If you talk to yeah, yeah. literally anyone who knows anything about Japanese rock music, they're going to know at least yeah. one of those three. Yeah, yeah, most likely. But it's more like, I think I'm thinking more about the other way around, because the people that, that I know um, that aren't really like Japanese music listeners they they always mention Deer and Grey. Like, even if they don't usually listen to Japanese music, that's the band that comes to mind when, when I say, like, J-Rock J or something. They're not like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, you're the guy that's really into Miku. Just destroy your credit right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do get teased about that, too. But uh, X-Japan is actually not a band that the guy that I mentioned before... He didn't know about X Japan. Was like, you don't know X Japan is like the biggest band in Japan. He's like, no, but I know they're in great. Do you know that's huh. really funny too? Because like, if you not not just like uh, in the community and like other people who know Japanese music, but even X Japan themselves, like now and then, will be like, yeah, we're like the biggest band ever. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I have the hardest time uh, are finding they people uh, who know them. Are they it, it's only like uh, not necessarily connoisseurs, but people who are in the know know about them and they're like yeah they're great they've been around forever yeah they're a big deal and then like 85 percent of everyone else is like never heard of them i, I think it's like the newer generation it's mm -hmm. um i mean x japan hasn't really put out that much new content <laughs> so no, they say. got an album coming <laughs> like no. next week or something right yeah the the new album <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, think, I think that's why but i mean yoshiki himself has been been going everywhere like yeah yeah so in that but, sense he has been able to spread x japan but it's not as as effective as x japan actually spreading x japan see though that's, that's you should, you that's... should try and ask Ask people if they know Yoshiki himself. That could uh, that could uh, shed some light into the theory that X Japan is kind of just Yoshiki now. Do you know uh, X Japan? No, you know Yoshiki. Oh fuck yeah, dude! I hang out with that guy at the bar on every Saturday. <laughs> so 
<laughs> How does the guy you in Milwaukee and the guy in LA, LA both know Yoshiki from the bar? What the fuck? <laughs> But that 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 is that is uh, that is something I kind of wanted to touch on too. So I mentioned these three as being you know big bands, but there's it's interesting because if you look at X, you got you know X Japan they do their shows and whatnot. But Yoshiki it pushes for the global market pretty fucking hard. Dear on Grey they used to. Uh, now they still do their European tours every now and then. And then Gazette, <laughs> you're just salted. You don't come to America. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go over Just there now. It. <laughs> but Gazette, fucking, they did like two tours in the U.S. Now I don't know if that one happened yet already. And now, the, and they went to Europe too. The, the but these three bands game. are still the big ones. There's one trying really hard. There's one kind of trying, and there's one that's like barely starting to try. And those are the ones that like you talk to anyone and they know them, even though they're. They don't even try to push into the market. It seems like. But I would consider like other bands that aren't in the Visual K umbrella, uh, like One OK Rock. Yeah, they're massive, as definitely. Well. Uh, yeah. I actually was in a Next group interview. Shut up. <laughs> I was in a group Regardless interview, you and I mentioned. Look, how... my. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I just. Side it was just like my. <laughs> shut up. My feelings about One OK Rock are. About the same as Mazel's feeling about the Gazette, of course, my most favorite band, and I fucking love him. Yeah, <laughs> that's good to know. But yeah, <laughs> like One OK Rock, regardless if you like their music now or if you only like their past music, they're big. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I was like, what I was saying a second ago was that I was in a group interview and uh, it got brought up like, like a- oh, what's a- your a- hobbies thing? and stuff? And I was like, uh, I write shit and they're like write about what and they're like japanese music and like oh like one okay rock <laughs> and the thing was the guy didn't call him one okay rock he called him one ok rock and i was like that's strange but he still knew about it's a them. pun <laughs> it's a pun. i think it's, it's kind of, no it, i think it's kind of supposed to be that, that way because it's like one o'clock you know it's a pun i'm just no, gonna say okay dot 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 yeah just oh, uh shit. next is doing next sorry things. <laughs> but uh yeah uh, so yeah. they're definitely another one that's well known so yeah it's not just the three that i mentioned and they, they are one of the they are definitely a newer band so that's the other thing too yeah uh you know there we all kind of have slightly different views of who the giants are but at the same time you can't help but admit yeah that band's big people know them but the other issue is there aren't that many again uh, yeah. One OK Rock is one of the newer ones, but there aren't that many newer ones. They never make it that huge, and I don't know what it is that's causing it. You do I don't, know. I, don't, it's, it's I wouldn't the say whole... One OK Rock is a new band. They're like almost pretty much the same. Really? But what I would say is that um, now that we have kind of established what kind of bands are the big ones, what do you think the like? Uh, what would happen if this band actually disbanded? Yeah, yeah. So my my question for that is, do you think that these people would just move on to the next band? Uh, who would the next band even be? Or would they just kind of retire into back into what's more convenient for them? Because admittedly, all of us who are into this, it's not convenient at all. No, not at all. <laughs> they don't make mm. it easy for us international fans for the most part i mean they try but it's just not that easy some, some of no um, some of them try somewhat i mean it would be so much easier to just only get my music off of like amazon google and yeah. itunes but i have to every now and then order something off of cd japan and get it super fucking late but yeah. hey <laughs> i got it so i can tell you from my personal experience that i was a lot more into like visual k <clears throat> back then uh, back in the days and uh, like you know like the Spash ray and and gazette and and Gurugamesh, they were like my top three bands yeah but now two of them are actually gone the Spash ray is no longer active and Gurugamesh also surprisingly just disbanded yeah so in my experience i have jumped more towards the kind of like regular rock that isn't in the visual casing because i haven't been able to find a similar sound or, 
or like style in other new visual K bands. And I think also the new visual K bands, uh, they have trends. So they make this this type of music uh, because they know it's popular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, they um, really as you were, out of nowhere too. I was kind of thinking uh, randomly as you were speaking, um, I got reminded of, because you, you mentioned trend. Yeah. That reminded me of uh, Malice Miser. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we were talking like big bands, right? And in the 90s, there were bands like uh, Malice Miser and Luna C who are like still active, okay, but they were into this n- 90s this visual, okay? Yeah. And when they bro- uh, all of them broke up at the end of the 90s, right? Um, what the fuck? Guess- I, dropped, <laughs> I, dropped, I dropped the pin. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all, uh, when Maris Miser broke up at the end of the 90s or the start of the 21st century, I guess, I, I don't I don't know how to phrase this, but like, I guess what happened was that people like the visual K genre or like the fandom as it, as it is by itself continued, but it like got completely, not like reborn, but like moved on to something completely different, like different subgenres or something like that. So I think, I think you're saying that it kind of like evolved into another yeah, yeah. direction. Because- because well, the big ones, once the big ones of one era just like break up and leave, then the whole thing kind of shifts to stick with what's big uh, in the yeah, next what, com- yeah, next comers. Band, you know? do. Well, wouldn't you say it got super segmented? Red also. Because but I think that the, the, I, think I guess that that's be... a small case study, isn't it? When Malice yeah, Miser yeah. and uh, what's what, uh, what about Moi de Moi too? Like that's. It's kind of the same. Yeah, those were always kind of a niche. But uh, like those those bands definitely did hold a special place in a large group of people's hearts, and then they just kind of yeah. stopped, be it because yeah. of deaths or just they stopped. But mm. then I feel like the community, the fan base, is really segmented. Like there isn't these like four bands that everyone likes. It's just like. Yeah, I like this band, but they disbanded, and I moved on to this one, but they disbanded. It's <laughs> it's that cycle of the of VK yeah. bands that show up out of nowhere. They're awesome for like twenty minutes, and then they're gone forever. I think yeah. they get confused. Like, what kind of things should I do now? Now that like these big bands are no longer here, because they kind of set, set some type of standard, I guess. Yeah. Because they are like the most popular bands, so that means. Like, yeah, people like this kind of stuff. So that's maybe that's the direction we should go. But then when they disperse, like, they, I, I think the band, the newer bands get confused. Like, what should we do to make us? Yeah, and there's, yeah I mean, so there's like, definitely the inspiration from the bigger bands to the little bands. But why is it that the little bands never become the big band? Because they break up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, but they break so up because, because they never become the big bands. Because it's not sustainable anymore. It's it's cycle because they well, break up because they never become the big band because they break up because they never become you know. <laughs> but it's, why? Yeah, it's that's the <clears throat> question. I think it's because the market is overly saturated. Is like it? I think I mentioned I mentioned this um like several podcasts ago that like because of the internet and because of the way different way that you promote now there are way too many bands that get attention that wouldn't have gotten any attention at all like 20 or 30 years ago because they would just have been like uh doing rehearsals in somebody's garage and nobody would know about them but now you know about them i like how you say there's way too many like they don't deserve no there's there's way too many no, no. It there are way too many bands that even the Western fans like can know about. So their attention is like super segmented, and you don't know what to focus on because it's not like like somebody like some magazine or some or some trendsetter is pushing certain bands to just like funnel people into several smaller fandoms. It's like all over the place. So the attention is too dispersed. And certain bands don't get the amount of attention that they feel like they want. And then they break up and nobody ever rises to the top because nobody ever makes it past like, what, four years of band life. So that's the thing, though. I I think a a good part of it is the marketing, how they decide to market themselves to the international and, I guess, local audience. And that'll determine how big they do end up getting. But at the same time, you mentioned, you know, people not knowing who to follow or 
they follow these smaller bands and not other smaller bands. I don't know about you guys, but one of the problems I tend to have is somebody will be like, oh, you like that band? You should listen to this band. And then I'll listen to that other band. I'm like, why did you even fucking recommend this to me? And like a lot of times there's a reason why, like there's some similarity there. But unless I happen to run into something on my own, I always have some kind of bias. I don't trust very many other people's opinion. Yeah, I, w- I would say I'm the same. Um, and uh, yeah. So I, I guess the way discovery happens now is kind of a problem because some people only trust themselves. And if <laughs> if you're getting a recommendation from someone, you go in like, that bitch doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> and then you listen to the band, and you're like, they're okay, but they're not this band. But that's maybe why, I like these uh, magazines, as, as um, Nexus mentioned, they serve their purpose because they were, like, uh, like I filter. Mean, yeah, maybe? it's yeah, it's kind of like uh, what do you call it? Um, Influencer, trendsetter. I don't know. Yeah, what. that's the thing. You need real influencers, not just fucking John on the corner. Some guy. Yeah, some some fucking guy who's just like, like uh, oh yeah, you're into I love- Deluhi? I know they're not around anymore, but you should listen to fucking Dada Roma. And it's like, <laughs> why the fuck should I listen to Dada Roma? I don't know, they're good. No, I'm not saying they're not, but I'm just saying like if somebody just recommended somebody to me randomly off of like another band that I know, nine out of ten times I will go check it out, but whatever song I end up listening to is probably not the one like they were thinking of when they recommended them. And I'll be like, wow, this is terrible. Well, just tell them to send you the Hickens song. <laughs> and they were well, the thing of. is too, and it's not actually terrible. It's just not what I was expecting because I went into it uh, like, oh, it's going to sound just like this. And of course it's not going to. Wouldn't you be upset though if it sounded just like that and then you would just say that would everything you? sounds the same? Would you? I mean, you're looking for a, a certain signature in there with a bit of flair from the actual members themselves. But at the end of the day, there yeah, is a sound profile that you like. Yeah. I mean, you can always, yeah, like your music taste can always like evolve too. I mean, if you happen to find something new that you haven't heard before, I mean, that will surely influence you. All right. Well, I think the... <sighs> I don't know if there's really a bottom line here. I know we did a lot of discussion, definitely some opinions being thrown around. Uh, I I, I think it's kind of clear who we think the Giants are. They're definitely popular people. I think that you can say that we do agree that when they do go away, it just scatters the community around. But I think we don't know why people can't rise up to the top anymore. Yeah, I think I think we're kind of stuck going nowhere with this one. Uh, if we look, one OK Rock that we did mention before, they did somehow rise to the top, right? They weren't always there, even though they're, they are quite old as a band, but they kind of flew under the radar for a long time. And then they suddenly became, became big. What did they do that could be possible to replicate? Well, in this specific case, it was because they started to go for the international market and not yeah. just stay in Japan. So they were big in Japan already, but yeah. they wanted to uh, become even bigger. And that's when they started to reaching out to the international market. And you see this with Crossfade and you see this yeah. with Cold Rain and you also see this with Crystal Lake. But they're more on the more like metalcore side, which yeah, those, really... those three that you mentioned, I hear yeah. about them now and then, but I don't feel like they're as successful as one okay. But yeah, yeah the the reason why they're successful um, like abroad, it's because they have this sound that's really similar to the to the Western music, and that's why it resonates with that yeah. crowd. But I mean, like the shy, they're like we think that they're big but like they're not that big in japan i don't i don't actually think they are big they are big okay, like you shut indi- up. You shut up. <laughs> didn't didn't we talk <laughs> about this in the past where they're, like you, yeah. you, you so, bring up versailles uh, and japanese people are like nice. for who so i think well, the yeah. ramifications of these giants disappearing all depend on what area they're giant in yeah if probably, probably yeah. if alfie disappeared in the western visual gay and jerok fandom nobody would even know <laughs> But the Japanese fans would be committing mass suicide. I mean... <laughs> you guys got all quiet. So I, I guess, uh, yeah. Uh, too, too dark, too dark. Why doesn't anyone climb <laughs> like, the ranks? Like... Nobody knows. Nobody's ever successful anymore. Why? Uh, why? Yeah. Uh, because 
the big ones are still like getting all the attention. So like regular people who, are, who get into J Rock, they don't have to search for the like smaller bands. They just get like all these uh, big bands served on a silver plate because that's the one that get ah. the most attention. Well, Maybe that's, that's, that's yeah, that true. makes sense. But that's nobody rises because they don't get the space to rise because the big ones are still fucking. <laughs> yeah, oh, so the big ones are bad. still there. And yeah. what, maybe when they disappear, maybe we'll see someone new rise up. Maybe there's really nothing to worry about. But that's the other thing, too. I talk about it a lot, is when these bands go on tour, they should be trying to buddy up with other bands and be like, hey, you like this band? You'll like this band, too? It's like, you like cheese? You like cheese with crackers, you know? And you don't see it enough. You don't see it enough. Deron Gray doesn't ever take anyone Japanese on tour with him. Gazette, mm-hmm. one man's all mm-hmm. over the place. Uh, yeah. I can't really speak for X because I'm not like 100% on all that, but what's what's stopping them from doing it? What's stopping but them from bringing someone up? But you're mentioning big bands, and they don't need any support bands. They, well, but they don't need any support bands, but why can't they be supportive of other bands? I mean, Yoshiki arguably is the reason Deron Gray is so big today, because he found them way back when, if I remember this correctly. Yeah, you do. So like, mass, so like, there was that let's mentality. Say, let's say I'm a wealthy man. Oh, let's say I'm wealthy let's man. <laughs> Never. <But laughs> I, I don't have to help you just to be nice. Like, I mean, I have a lot of cash. Like, then doesn't mean anything. But look, look what X got out of it. Admittedly, if it wasn't for Deron Gray or Gazette, even I would have never heard of X Japan. Really? Oh. Okay. I yeah. Know that. Because Deron Gray was what got me into the scene. So if it wasn't for Deron uh-huh. Gray, I wouldn't have gotten enough into the scene to finally realize who X Japan was. Because, granted, when I started getting into it, there was kind of uh, a lull in the massive machine that is X Japan. They weren't doing as much back then. But the coupling tours that you're talking about, I mean, it's being practiced a lot. Uh, but in but Japan. Typically... Well, yeah, but also in the <laughs> West, but it's typically the bands that I mentioned. Like you have um, uh, One Onky Rock. They had, I think they had like two support bands uh, in some countries with them. And they also, uh, like you have Crystal Lake. They're teaming up with Adept and, and all these like Western metal bands that I don't even know the name mm-hmm. of. Yeah, so they're definitely when- going to be rising up in their scene because they're teaming up with these Western bands and going to play Western shows. And people are like, oh, okay. I'm here to see this one band, but this other band's pretty decent, so maybe I'll pick up an album or something. But like I said, they're Mazo. not bringing each other up. Mm. Mazo, do you do you not remember when Morrigan were touring Europe with the Western Visual K band and <laughs> people didn't appreciate it very much? That's different because <laughs> it was supposed to go one way, but it was totally the fucking opposite, where everybody knew Morrigan but not the other band. So there's mm, there's yeah. two ways to do this. There's the if you're the smaller band from Japan going into the European scene, you find a somewhat more well-known European band to help you warm up to the audience. Mazo, I don't think that was the problem. <laughs> people people knew about the band, but they didn't appreciate the band. <laughs> they didn't appreciate them. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't want to go into the details, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I think we've kind of hit a hit an end here for this one. So let's just move on for now. This is definitely a discussion that is still open. Uh, I'd love to see some discussion on whatever platform you guys want to yell at us at. Uh, I usually answer because I fucking hate myself. But uh, let's move on to our little quick stories today. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Ah. That's so exciting. All right, I'll go first. Uh, I, for my little quick bits, I got two of them, I guess. Uh, we got our interview with uh, Azusa Tadokoro, uh, amazing vocalist and voice actress. Uh, I love her to death. I can't explain in words how much I love Azusa Tadokoro, so definitely go check that one out. And uh, Lady Baby put out a new video, music video. Uh, it's pretty good. I think they're really starting to find their... Uh, their own legs to stand on without the beard. Uh, Nexus, you got anything? I guess I got a really quick, quick bit, and that is that Eddie Furichi, that we enough. haven't talked about for a while, <laughs> finally find a new bass player, but they didn't reveal who it is yet. He just goes by Mr. A by now, so we're looking out for that. 
I'm gonna keep you posted. It's my favorite. Spoiler alert! It's Rayta. Oh no! <laughs> All right, MBT. You got MBT. One. Oh, <sighs> okay. So this month is March, and on March 9th, it's the Miku Day. So I thought I mentioned that we had an interview with the creator of Hatsune Miku, and uh, it was quite interesting because we also went to the concert, and it was quite an experience. I went there with this and. Well, this is not here today, so you can't tell you about it. So it was interesting interview. You should definitely check it out and see why Hatsune Miku is a big thing. And the other stories that I have is that Metal, Baby Metal and Wakaki Ban has hit 100 million views on their each individual um, music videos. So that's an amazing miles, milestone. Yeah, that was it for me. Yeah, okay. Uh, I guess uh, that's that's pretty much it for today. I mean, a little short without Suze. Not that he's all that tall or anything, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we literally cannot exist without him. <laughs> we can't exist without him. But I guess that we can wrap it up here. I mean, uh, yeah, check out those quick stories. Definitely let us know your opinions. Thank you for sticking around. Sorry for always being sick. I bet it doesn't sound great on the mic. I'm gonna find out. Uh, Honestly, it sounds pretty fine. You sound good. pretty fine. Why are you so kind to them? <laughs> you know, I, I cannot like shit on him on air all the time. It's gotta keep that in the background. You, you see, you guys, you see the shit I put up with? Anyway, I've been your host, Mazo, with co host Nexus. Quack. Check it out Fucking on Spotify. Check it out on Spotify. <laughs> and uh, special yeah, guest, we're on NBT. Spotify. NBT is yeah. on Spotify. <laughs> we're all on Spotify. Yep. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys around. It sounds so ominous. See you next month. Bye. Bye. I'm going to punch you.